This is the Maya tutorial for the text tool and we are going to go over the basics of creating uh, 3D text in Maya and um, this is actually a rather simple tutorial so it will be a nice break from all the hardcore sculpture and stuff that you're doing. You can definitely feel free to add some of that stuff into this assignment like if you want to I don't know create a pedestal or something for your logo to sit on but um, you know in some some kind of graphic element but um, all that's required is your um, text logo and it can even be floating in black space on this one assignment that's okay so um, basically to create text if you click on create type not SVG type it will pop out this window in your attribute editor and it says 3D type by default and mine starts on the Lucida Sand, Cons Sand Unicode on, on the uh, font so if I want to change the text I just type in there so there's my text and I can choose the font here And these are just the fonts that are on my computer. So um, I like, I have a, a new love for Avenir. That's one of my favorite fonts these days. Um, so I'll play with this a little bit. One of the things about this text assignment is blocky sans serif fonts will behave a little better. Uh, but you can still work with a more ornate font. Okay, so type attributes control the alignment and the appearance of the text, font size, tracking, all that good stuff. Geometry controls the aspects of the polygon mesh. So you can see the mesh on the side there. Um, that has a bunch of divisions on the side. Curve resolution is at 4. You can bring that up or down if you want. If you take it down it gets a little blockier and if you take it up it gets nice and curvier so that's up to you. Um, the extrusion is what gives it its width so without the extrusion it's just a flat plane and then you turn that on and it gives it its thickness just like the extrusion we already know. Uh, if you want to be able to deform your type, you can go to Deformable Type and click on Deformable Type, as it were. And this would allow you to use um, deformers. I'm going to go to the, I think, I think deformers are under rigging, if not animation. So yeah, deform and do 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 do. I'm looking for, there it is, I think. Okay. Nonlinear deformers are kind of fun to play with. Not a requirement for this particular um, assignment, but you can play with them if you want. So if I wanted to have, uh, do, 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 let's do a bend deformer. give it a curvature. Well, I'm going to turn it back to the side. You can just play with these settings until you see something you like. through. 
select an object. Deform, nonlinear, twist. There we go. So these are the um, the deformers you can use if you if you want. It's not a requirement. I'm just kind of playing around here. It's going to be a short tutorial anyway. So and whichever way you turn them is going to affect how it deforms, as you can see. And remember, this stuff can all be animated, so you don't need to animate this, um, but we will animate the logo um, as an alternative for a later assignment. So um, let me get rid of that. And let's go back to type, back to the type tab. And I don't actually need deformable to be turned on. And let's go back to the extrusion here. OK, so the extrude has four divisions. That means you're going to see four slices along, along the width. So if you're not doing any kind of um, beveling or deforming, you probably don't need those if it's just going to be a straight extrusion. Um, but you might want to do some beveling. So down to bevel here. Here's the bevel. I'm going to turn that on. And that creates um, either an inner or an outer uh, chisel kind of look, like a, uh, um, and then the cross section will be according to this profile. So if you want it to look like a 45 um, straight bevel, you can do that. But there's also a lot of other options. And um, bevel divisions, you might have to bring up sometimes in some of these like more complicated uh, patterns, but you know something like that. Just a few bevel divisions will do. So it's again just a matter of playing with it until you get something you want. Um, the bevel offset pushes it in or out further, like that, and then the bevel distance pushes it away from the text or towards. And so here you can see. something that can happen with your bevel and that is um, obviously that's not what we want and if that happens usually if you bring the offset down that will fix it um, that will happen when when the bevel crosses over itself it will start getting broken so now the thing about this particular set of tools I'm going to create a, another type. Now if you choose a more ornate font, something that is, um, let's see, something that's more fancy, more or less, or more, um, just has generally more curves and more, there we go, we'll try that one. So this will present some problems when you're beveling it because of what I showed before. I'm going to turn on the bevel and um, I'm going to, if you do an inner bevel, it's very likely that you're, um, with the more ornate decorative fonts like this, you're probably not going to be able to get much bevel offset. So you can see I've got to take it down to, yeah, I mean 0 0.049 and I'm still getting it in the three here. So, <clears throat> and you can see like how minute that is. So, um, if you do want to use one of these types of fonts that are all fancy like this, a lot of times the outer bevel will help you out, but it can also push the the mesh into the letter next to it by doing the outer bevel. 
and as a result you might have to move your type around a little bit letter by letter so um, I would have to do a small small adjustment on these letters if I were going to use this like this so Now, um, if I go to the outliner, I will find the the two type meshes here, and so that that should show you. So there's A D and M type mesh one, type mesh two, and don't forget to rename these. Oh, it doesn't like me starting with a number. That's right. Okay, sorry. You can't select the um, the letters individually without going into component mode. But you can go into. There's a couple other options. You can go into the text tab, and under kerning, we can just push that out a little bit until it. Until it moves away and then the other option would be to um, create the text one letter at a time So you get the idea here. And you should definitely feel free to scale things and Not just create a big block of text, but kind of play with it and move stuff around, scale stuff, emphasize different bits of it, see what happens. So don't be afraid to experiment. It's a very simple assignment. Um, there should be time to play with it to some degree at least. So um, have fun with it. That's it.